Hello students, welcome back to my channel and in this video we are going to discuss a poem titled Girl, Lithe and Tiny Tony by Pablo Neruda. Okay, and this poem is prescribed for the first year students of CHSC who have opted for alternative English. Let's begin. About the poet and the poem. So Pablo Neruda is actually a pseudonym. The real name of the person is Neftali Ricardo Reyes Basso Alto. Okay, and he is a Chilean poet, a person who belongs to the country called Chile. And um, he won the Nobel Prize in Literature in the year 1971. He is quite known for his collection of poems named 20 Love Poems and a Song of Despair. Okay, now we are going to read this poem Girl Lithe and Tony. Now, what do you mean by lithe? Lithe means graceful and tawny means tanned color. Okay, something of uh, tan brown color. Okay, now Girl Lithe and Tony. The sun that forms, the fruits that plumps the grains, that curls seaweeds, filled your body with joy and you luminous eyes and your mouth that has the smile of water. So over here, the poet is actually writing a poem for an absent woman. Okay. And uh, he is calling that lady. or She is a young girl. Okay. Now he is calling that girl that you are beautiful, you are graceful and your complexion is brown in color. Now we don't know whether she is in reality a brown girl or that she has got tanned under the sun. But anyway, the poet seems to be liking that brown color and appreciating that color. So he has composed a poem on that. Of course. And now he is saying that dear girl, you are too pretty. Okay. And I think the sun, who is the creator of all energy, the sun, who is responsible for the growth of grains, for plumping up the grains, the sun, who is responsible for the curling of the seaweeds, that very sun has infused lively energy into your body. Your eyes are also shining bright. Luminous means bright. Okay, your eyes are also shining brightly and your mouth has got the smile of water. That means your smile that is spontaneous. Your smile is as spontaneous as the flow of water. Again, water is something which we need every day, right? In order to survive, water is something which we need every day. So here for the poet, the girl with her smile is something that he needs every day. Okay. that the kind of grip that the girl has over the poet, we'll see further on how strong that grip is. Okay, now moving on. A black yearning sun is braided into the strands of your black mane when you stretch your arms. You play with the sun as with a little brook and it leaves two dark pools in your eyes. So over here, poet is saying that even the sun seems enchanted by your beauty. So much so that the sun is playing hide and seek among the braids. So she has tied it up into braids. And it's as if the sun is playing hide and seek among those braids. Right. Black mane. Mane, what do you achha, when we when do you we when do we use the word mane? Mane is basically used to refer to the lion's mane. Okay, lion's mane. Or lion kya hota hai? Lion ka quality kya hota hai? Fierce. So over here, the girl's personality is compared to a fierce personality. And with that fierce personality, she, I mean, look at her. She is youthful, she is slender. But the poet is saying that, uh, yeah, she has got a fierce personality also. Okay, she has got a personality to control everything. And imagine 
she is even controlling the sun okay so the sun is as if enchanted by her beauty and in that process the sun when it comes to hide among the traces of the girl it turns black okay now you play with the sun as if it's a little brook just as you play with a little tiny stream that flows through the woods just as you play without any concern in a very casual manner similarly you are playing with that sun as well you are not bothered by the um, fierce nature of the sun your fierce nature is more overpowering than the sun's actual character okay and it leaves two dark pools in your eyes that means you are so much excited you are so much excited that um one is in your excitement you keep on looking at the sun you keep on playing with the sun you keep on staring with the sun and what happens is it it it's as if um it's as if uh, there are two dark pools in place of your eyes and that uh, adds charm to your personality and second is when you get excited the pupils of your eye they get dilated okay so again the poet is saying that uh, because of your excitement because of your lively nature because of your enthusiasm which is always over the top because of that the pupils of your eyes seem to have been dilated and that can also be compared to two dark pools in your eyes right now girl lie then tony nothing draws me towards you everything bears me farther away as though you were known you are the frenzied youth of the bee the drunkenness of the wave the part of the wheat here again in this third stanza the poet is saying that dear girl you who are blessed with grace you who has got a beautiful slender body you who have got the complexion of tan brown color i feel enchanted by you because of certain characteristics in your nature but then these are the things that again push me away from you because i feel that if i mean i feel that with your unchanneled energy with your raw enthusiasm people might talk about you and i you know i can get kind of embarrassed because of that so the things that attract me towards you are the very same things that push me away from you as though you were noon now who wants to play under the hot afternoon sun no one wants to play right everyone wants to go back indoors rest for a while and when the sun again comes down during the sunset period children again come out of the of their houses and they play so he is saying that just like no one wants to remain under the hot afternoon sun everyone wants just they just want to move away similarly i also want to move away when i think of how um you know um how raw you are raw in the sense that uh, some portions of you seem to be unsophisticated some portions of you seem to be unlady like so you know i i don't know whether i can adjust with that kind of uh, characteristics or not but then these are the very same characteristics which attract me like an iron that attracts gets uh, attracted towards a magnet similarly right now you are the frenzied youth of the bee he is saying now what are the things that are actually he is celebrating about that girl but again the things that are pushing him away from that girl the frenziedness that means the unchanneled energy of the bee have you seen a bee is it still no all the time it keeps on hovering in the garden from one flower to another just like that he is saying that you girl you are not steady keep on moving from here to there there to here you know you are fickle the drunkenness of the wave the waves you know the waves that break on the shore in the beach have you seen those waves very calmly very lazily 
there's a different kind of attraction to it. So he is saying that. Again, the erratic nature of the wave. Sometimes the wave is very high up. Sometimes it's very low. Sometimes it break, breaks apart immediately. And sometimes it's just lazy in its behavior. You know, that's erratic nature. And the power of the wheat ear. Have you seen a wheat ear? Wheat, wheat. Um, kehu ka? Kehu to nahi. I don't know. Have you seen a wheat field in our country, Punjab, Haryana? Was a wheat field ke jo hai. And then wheat ear, those plants that grow in the fields, they are not steady. Thoda sa hawa chalta hai to immediately they keep on moving. So he is saying that you are not steady. Whatever your thoughts are, you are not steady about it. You are not steady about your emotions. How can I trust you? You have all this raw, unchanneled energy within you. You are so difficult to control. You are so random in nature. How can I control you? If not control you, then I don't know how to appreciate you wholly without criticizing you, without thinking that, oh, this is so unladylike. Oh, I don't know. Is it normal to behave like this? Is it okay to behave like this? Will others also accept you for your behavior? I don't know because of this. My somber heart searches for you nevertheless and I love your joyful body, your slender and flowing voice, dark butterfly, sweet and definitive, like the wheat field and the sun, the poppy and the water. Now he is saying, the characteristics that you bear, I get attracted towards you because of that. And again, I get pushed away because of that. But then at the end, I keep on searching for you because I want you. Okay, my heart wants you. Nevertheless, whatever be the flaws, whatever be the imperfections, I don't care about the imperfections or the flaws. My heart wants you. And I love, I love the way you look. I love the originality. I love the rawness within you. I love how you are filled with joy. I love how you are dreaming with happiness. I love the enthusiasm that you carry along everywhere. I love the slender, beautiful body of yours. I love the beautiful, flowing, mellifluous voice of yours. I love the way you are and I don't want you to change for anything. Dark butterfly, sweet and definitive. You are like a butterfly. You are like a butterfly. Butterfly ka kya hota hai? Easy to find, difficult to catch. Okay, so you are like a butterfly and you are dark. Now dark butterflies are usually a rarity in nature and they are very graceful to look at. But then again, dark here also refers to her skin color as well. Okay, so dark butterfly, sweet and definitive. Sweet means, yes, she's a sweet girl. Definitive means, means humko lag raha hoga ki iska life mein kuch aim nahi hai. Humko lag raha hoga ki ye har roz aise hi aati hai, gunti pirti hai jati hai. But no, probably she has got something in her mind about herself. She's definitive about herself. Probably she knows where to stand. Although to the outsider she may look wayward. She may look like a wandering soul, but no, she has got something within her and she knows it very well. She knows her plans well. She knows the gravity of everything, although she doesn't show it. Right. And just like the other creations of nature, you are also a beautiful creation of nature. Okay. And... She is an embodiment of nature itself. Okay. She is no different than, um, she is not an alien, nothing. She is an embodiment of nature itself. She is a part of nature. She is a part of those beautiful creations of God. Just like the wheat field, the sun, the poppy and the water. She is one with the nature. Okay. Chalo. Mara poem khatam. Thank you so much.